The Disney Dining Plan is now live in Disney World, and we want to make sure you're getting the most out of it during your visit. So you know we were there on day one. We tried out the Dining Plan. We know all the tips, tricks, updates for the 2024 version. So join us as we use this service for the first time in years and learn how to stretch your Dining Plan dollars as efficiently as possible. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today's video is all about making sure you know how to play the Disney dining plan game to your advantage. For anyone who needs a quick catch up, not the tomato -y kind, the recap kind, the Disney dining plan is an optional add-on to your Disney World vacation package, which includes both the hotel room and tickets at a bundled price, most of the time. Now, when purchased, the DDP allows you to prepay for your meals and snacks before your trip to make dining around the parks more convenient for you and your family. The Disney Dining Plan has been gone ever since the 2020 closures, even though they literally tried to give everybody a free dining plan when they couldn't come to Disney World because of the closures, and then they were like, hey, never mind, just kidding, nobody gets a dining plan ever. But anyway, on January 9th, 2024, it returned. The Dining Plan originally debuted back in 2005, and I literally used it in 2005 staying at Pop Century Resort. I wanted DDP knowledge, and I got it. Now I've got it for the last 20 20 years. <laughs> so even though a few things have changed with the Disney Dining Plan, a lot of that stuff we originally learned back in the day, you know, when like American Idol was all the rage and Bob Iger was a new CEO of the Disney company, it's still similar to how it worked before it went MIA. That being said, the name of the game with the Dining Plan is Your Mileage May Vary. You know how I always say that the only consistent thing about Disney restaurants is that they're inconsistent? Well, even though there are dining plan rules, it still can vary depending on the restaurant and your server, and some people will let you have an appetizer instead of a dessert, and some people won't, and sometimes you get told one thing and then and something else happens. So that's my goal with this video, is to help you through all of that variation, to tell you what might happen, what's supposed to happen, and what happened when we tried it. Hopefully that will help. Okay, are you ready to find the best values for your dining plan credits? Yep, we're gonna start off on a high note and get straight to the good stuff. So, Disney Dining Plan quick service credits can be redeemed for one entree, one non-alcoholic or alcoholic beverage of choice, and a Disney Dining Plan table service credit can be redeemed for one entree or one buffet, depending on the restaurant type, one non-alcoholic or alcoholic beverage, and one dessert. But not all entrees are created equal in Disney's fast food or table service realm. Some are cheaper, some are pricier, and some are better. As a general rule of thumb, if you can get a quick service meal that's $25 or more, or a table service meal that's $60 or more, then you can really stretch your dollar with the Disney Dining Plan. That's where the top values are gonna be is in that arena. Just don't try to lowball yourself because you got those DDP credits to spend. So the more expensive the food you order, the better value, as long as it's good food. Now here are a few examples of some quick services and table services that'll help give you the best bang for your dining plan credit. The quick service Docking Bay 7 in Hollywood Studios features stuff themed to the Star Wars universe. Some of the menu items here are on the pricier side of things and it gives you a better value you for your credit. You can maximize your credit by opting for options like the Batuan Beef and Crispy Tapato Stir Fry, that's $19, Smoked Cadu Pork Ribs for $17, or Pika Tuna Poke, I love saying that, for $18. You could also add on an alcoholic drink like the Takodana Quencher for $17, add that to the $18 Tuna Poke and you're looking at a $35 quick service meal right there. Meanwhile, Flame Tree Barbecue in Animal Kingdom serves hearty barbecue portions with some of the higher priced items being their ribs and chicken and pulled pork sampler, that's $19 right now, or the St. Louis rib dinner for $17 and the ribs and chicken combo for $16. Pair one of these with something like the Island Breeze drink minus the Glow Cube for 14 bucks, and you could be looking at a single meal worth $33 for one quick service credit. But one of the best quick services to use your Disney Dining Plan credits on is actually over at Polite Pig in Disney Springs. This has even more barbecue, but like award-winning Michelin-recognized barbecue, so you know you're getting the good stuff here. Pricier options on the menu here will really help you get the best value for your quick service credit. You could opt for Layla's ribs for $26, $6. The Cedar Plank Salmon for $26 or the USDA Prime Brisket for $22. 
There are plenty of cocktails, beers, and wine choices to pick from here too, ranging in price from $5 to more expensive options around $16. If you pair a $16 cocktail with the ribs, you're looking at a whopping $42 value for your quick service meal, which is pretty hard to beat. And you know you're gonna get great food there. Now, let's move on to the table service dining. If your family is all about that character dining, then good news. The Disney dining plan does work on these typically high-end locations, making them well worth the reservation if you've got those table service credits handy. For instance, you could book a reservation for Tusker House in Animal Kingdom. That's gonna normally cost $62 per adult. While most character dining experiences only cost one credit, some, like Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom, will cost you two. So just make sure you know exactly how many credits you're gonna wind up spending on a meal before booking your reservation, because that's gonna affect the value. If possible, you may also want to avoid booking breakfast character dining experiences since these are typically a less pricey, good for an out of pocket expense. Again, if you've got the Disney dining plan credits handy, then it's best to go big or go home whenever you can. So you're usually gonna hear me say, go to breakfast character meals because they're gonna cost less than lunch and dinner. But when it comes to the dining plan, it's all about bang for your buck, right? So this is me giving you permission to book the table service with the premium steak options. If you book a reservation for La Hacienda de San Angel over in Epcot, you can get the carne asada, a $54 value, vanilla flan for $20, 12 bucks and a handcrafted premium margarita, $24, for a meal that would typically cost you $90 out of pocket. Once you add tax to that, you're definitely at 100 bucks. And let's keep the ball rolling with the best value Disney dining plan, snacks. Whether you decide to purchase the standard dining plan or the quick service dining plan, snacks come with both. Snacks are identified by a little purple and white checkerboard symbol like this. But no matter the snack, each one will always cost you just one snack credit. So which snacks are gonna be the most worthy of your Disney dining plan credits? If a snack costs $6 or more, it's generally gonna be a decent snack credit value. But if the snack you're eyeballing costs below that benchmark price, you might be better off just paying for it outright and saving your snack credits for something more high end. For example, if you're in the mood for something cold and sweet, then head on over to the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor in Magic Kingdom for an ice cream sundae. These range in price from eight to $9 and include one of our personal favorite ice cream options, the All-American Sundae, made with old fashioned vanilla and chocolate ice cream with hot fudge, peanut butter drizzle, whipped cream, and a cherry on top. Note that you won't be able to get the $19 Mickey Sink Sunday for a credit since that one does come with a souvenir bowl. Using snack credits is also a great way to taste your way through the Epcot festivals. Most items on these menus that don't include alcohol should be included in your snack credit options. In fact, remember that you can use more than one snack credit in a single day. You can use all your snack credits in a single day. So if you're going to an Epcot festival, it might make sense to use all your credits there. Because even though you'll receive a specific amount of dining credits per night of your resort's day, you can use those credits whenever you want to. So instead of breaking up your snack credits to spend one per day of your trip, you could use multiples on a single day, but that does mean you'd be out of snack credits for certain park days later on. So just make sure you know exactly what you wanna spend your credits on before you go. That's why you're here at DFB, we can help you with that. And remember, even if you do run out of snack credits before the end of your trip, you can always buy more snacks or festival food items out of pocket if you so desire. Disney is not gonna turn away your money. One of the latest and greatest deals that we've found we could use our snack credits on during the most recent Festival of the Arts was the crazy chocolate funnel cake featured at the funnel cake stand in the American Adventure Pavilion. Usually this snack could cost you $12, so all you chocoholics out there are really gonna be getting best bang for your buck if you spend a snack credit on that. Poutine over at the refreshment port in Epcot can also be a great snack value for your Epcot day, but watch out on this one. Festivals may pull a fast one on you. Normally, the poutine here is considered to be a snack credit and will cost around seven to eight dollars. But when that poutine becomes a festival offering, meaning it'll receive some sort of poutine magic using different toppings and ingredients, then it may become a quick surface meal credit instead of a snack credit. Very tricky. Just something to keep in mind, at least for that specific location. Before we move on to our next point, I've got something crucial I need to tell you regarding your snack credits. Now, this is something that comes up every single year when the Disney dining plan is in use. And since it hasn't been in use for like four years, a lot of you might not know this one. If a kiosk or counter service window serves snacks and snacks only, 
then more than likely it's going to say on the Disney World website that it does not accept the Disney dining plan. That's not true. It will take your snack credits. It's just not one of the big wigs that you'd spend quick or table service credits on. So it gets forgotten about and kicked to the side. And it says on the website, it does not take snack credits, even though it does. A good example of this is Aloha Isle over there in Magic Kingdom. If you look on the Disney World website right now, it says does not accept dining plan with a big old circle with a line through it. But it does. It takes snack credits for multiple items on the menu. So it's important to be on the lookout for those little purple checkered squares when you're in the park because they'll let you know exactly if a snack credit can be redeemed for a certain snacky item or not. However, if you're wanting to do some pre-planning before your big trip and you can't rely on the Disney World website for that, then be sure to check out our snack bundles over on the dfbstore.com website. We have books that are dedicated just to snacks. They're going to tell you how much they cost. They're going to show you a picture of them. They're going to give you a review and they're going to tell you whether or not they will be accepted on the dining plan. We've got hundreds and hundreds of snacks in these little digital guides and we we do label them very clearly DDP or not. That way you don't have to be blindsided once you're in the park. Go check it out, dfbstore.com. Now, on the flip side of things, there are wrong ways to use your Disney Dining Plan credits. And by wrong, I mean you're not going to be getting your money's worth. While you're more than welcome to use your credits on anything you want, and you don't always have to pay for the priciest snack options if that's not what you want to eat, I'd still avoid using your snack credits on stuff like things you can just as easily get at your grocery store back home, like single-serving fruit or bags of potato chips. Items that are usually pretty cheap to purchase anyway, like popcorn bucket refills and cups of plastic cheese that are usually only a dollar. You can use a snack credit on it, but why? And items that are just straight up boring that you really don't need to buy, like a bottle of water when you could just bring a refillable bottle into the park with you, or ask for free water cups at those quick service locations. Now, my Disney dining plan motto has always been no snack credit gets left behind. If you find yourself at the end of your trip with a bunch of unused snack credits, then throw caution to the wind. Don't worry about stretching your dollar at this point. Just use them up because you paid for them. Disney dining plan credits do not carry over from one Disney trip to the next. If you need to, spend your credits on some of those packaged or bottled items just so you can take them with you to eat or drink on your way home. Sure, it may not be the best way to stretch your dining dollars, but it's better than having those leftover credits go to waste. Okay, hi Starbucks fans, this tip is for you. It's time to get more bang for your buck at Starbucks. On the first day of the Disney Dining Plan, we talked to a cast member over at the Main Street Bakery, aka Magic Kingdom Starbucks location, and we were told that all drink sizes count as one snack credit. And then we were told the exact same thing at Trolley Car Cafe, that's Hollywood Studios Starbucks location. So that means that if you're using a snack credit on a Starbucks beverage in the Disney parks, technically a tall 12 ounce drink is gonna be the same price as a Trent at 30 ounce drink. Doesn't take a math whiz to figure out which is the better deal here, but we're not done yet. Your Disney Dining Plan snack credit will also cover any additional espresso shots, foam, or flavorings that you decide to add to your drink. So this is me giving you permission to go all out and order that supersized coffee with all your fixins to start your Disney day off right. Now, like I said, at least that's what we were told and that was our experience when we were there. These things can change at any time, but it's worth a try. Now, maybe you want to consider a free dining plan alternative? Of course you do. Whether you choose to pay for the quick service dining plan or the standard dining plan, both are going to cost you quite a bit to use. The standard dining plan is $94.28 per adult per day and $29.69 per child ages 3 to 9 per day. While the quick service dining plan is going to cost $57.01 per adult per day and $23.83 per child ages 3 to 9 per day. But what if I told you there was a way to get a dining plan in Disney for free? That's right all your food for free. I said what I said. Now, Disney has brought back their super popular deal, the free Disney dining plan, and that's for Disney Plus subscribers only at this time. And it gives you and your entire party a free Disney dining plan for your entire trip. That is huge, my friends. We have crunched the numbers. We have done the math for 20 years, and the free Disney dining plan is the best way to save money on food in Disney World. It's also the best way to come out on top financially if you get the dining plan. Usually if you get the Disney dining plan, you're not going to actually save any money because they price it at such a point that people usually don't eat that much food. So the free Disney dining plan kind of ensures that you're going to save money. Now there's a lot of caveats to that. Can you get a discounted hotel room if you don't get the free dining plan, etc, etc, etc. It's all in the book. Go ahead to dfbstore.com, get the DFB guide. It's all in there. But 
TLDR, basically the free Disney dining plan is the best way to save money on your total package. Now, here are the catches to this. First, you have to be a Disney Plus subscriber on this. Not everyone in your whole family has to be, but at least one person needs to be. Now, in the past, Disney has announced free dining plans for certain affinity groups, but then uh, the next couple of days, they announced them for other affinity groups and then for the general public. We haven't seen that happen this year. We haven't seen them announce the free Disney dining plan for anyone except Disney Plus subscribers, which means they are really hurting for Disney Plus subscribers. But fingers crossed, they're going to open it up to the general public, but they haven't yet. Now, second, the deal cannot be combined with other discounts that might be available, like that discounted hotel room. This is where you're going to have to screw on your thinking cap and figure out if you could actually save money by buying your food and getting a hotel discounted rate instead. Usually, the more expensive the hotel and the bigger the discount, the more likely it makes sense to just buy the dining plan instead of getting the free dining plan. But I'll tell you right now, it's rare. Usually, the free dining plan is going to save you more money. Now, third, this deal is only around for a limited time. You can apply this deal to select trips that run between July 1st to September 30th, 2024. And again, your mileage can vary. If the first day of your vacation happens to start on September 30th, you should still be eligible for the discount, but triple bajillion check it. Fourth, this discount can and will sell out, so you'll need to act on it fast if you want it. And fifth, this free dining deal is featured as a four-day, four-night vacation promotion, but as is often the case with Disney World deals, we've discussed discovered that you may be able to book longer stays and still get the Disney dining plan for free. The type of dining plan you'll receive with this promotion all depends on what hotel you're staying at. You'll get a quick service plan for stays at most value and moderate resorts and a standard plan for most deluxe and DVC resorts. Next hack is something you should be doing anyway. Use mobile order. But a lot of people aren't sure they can use mobile order and their dining plan within the payment screen. Okay, good news. You do not have to wait in a forever long quick service line just to use your Disney dining plan credits. You can use your credits through the My Disney Experience app too. To mobile order, open the app, tap on the little plus button at the bottom of your screen and select order food. Then choose a participating quick service restaurant and hit begin order. Easy enough so far, right? You should automatically get a notification that lets you know your Disney dining plan credits can be used at that restaurant. Just make sure that you're signed into your My Disney Experience account. You know what else the MDE app will do for you? It'll let you know if your plan includes something that you didn't already have in your order. Now, this is really cool and it's new. We haven't seen this before. When we went to order a hot dog, the app had a notification at the top of the screen that said, don't miss out. Your dining plan allows you to add another standard beverage to your meal. So that was super helpful because if you're not ordering all the stuff that's included in your credit, it'll let you know. If for some reason you don't wanna use your dining plan credits on your meal, you can tap on the modify option once you get to the order review page and then choose, I don't wanna use my dining plan for this item. This can be a little tedious, especially if you have a larger order, since you'll need to update that payment selection for every item in your order. The My Disney Experience app automatically applies your dining plan credits to all the items, so you'll have to go through each item individually and choose, I don't want to use my dining plan for this item. Then you'll either finish your order if you're using your dining plan to pay for it, or pay for it using another payment method. And look, you did all that without having to stand in a quick service line to accomplish it. Good for you. Now, next hack, snag a specialty fireworks dining package. Now, this is very, very cool because you might get something for less money than you could before. Okay, so if you've got the Disney dining plan, you might as well go big or go home, right? One of the best meal deals you can use your DDP table service credits on while using the standard plan is a dining package, which will not only get you a meal, but will also get you reserved seating for fireworks. Currently, you can make reservations at select restaurants that offer the Fantasmic dining package over in Hollywood Studios by using your Disney Dining Plan table service creds. Here's a quick look at how much each package will cost credit-wise. Now, I want you to notice something here, something important. Disney isn't gouging you for those VIP Fantasmic Fireworks reservations. What you'll pay for a fireworks package while using the Disney Dining Plan is the same cost as just going to these restaurants normally. So if you were to eat at, say, Hollywood and Vine, you'll pay one table service credit whether you eat there for a typical meal or with a dining package reservation under your belt. Now, at the time of this this recording, the luminous dining packages for Epcot's nighttime spectacular don't currently take the Disney dining plan, so you're still going to have to pay for those dining packages out of pocket, but we'll let you know if the status of that changes later on in the future. 
Epcot. You can also use the Disney Dining Plan on Epcot Festival Dining Packages to get reserved seating for their specific festival concert series. Here's what that looks like for Epcot's Festival of the Arts Disney Broadway Concert Series going on right now. This is probably going to look pretty similar to how the other festival dining packages are going to work too, but the table service credit requirements per restaurant will not be officially known until booking is announced for each festival dining package. But what's cool here is that it used to be that you'd have to pay two table service credits for a dining package and now you only have to pay one for some of them, which is cool. So Disney could change things up later on. It's better to keep checking back for updated info instead of assuming all the dining packages will stay the same in case Disney decides to throw us a curveball. Reservations for dining packages can be made on the Disney World website or on the My Disney Experience app or by calling 407-WDW-DINE 60 days ahead. Okay, next up, don't get left in the dust. If this video is your first ever exposure to the Disney dining plan, I know this is a lot of information coming your way all at once, I'm sorry. Fortunately, you don't have to be kept in the dark. We've got a whole Disney Dining Plan playlist on our YouTube channel now, loaded with videos that go more into the 101 Dining Plan lingo to help you figure out what a dining credit is, what the difference between a snack and a meal credit is, what each Disney Dining Plan purchase will give you, you know, things that'll make you go, oh, now I get it, <laughs> we got you. If you're really on the fence about how you feel about the Disney Dining Plan or you've already purchased it, you want to make sure you make the best DDP decisions for every meal, be sure to pick up our DFB guide to maximizing the Disney dining plan. That's over at the dfbstore.com website too. In that guide, the team and I break down each plan, including its pros and cons, and provide you with example days and cost analyses so you know exactly how to use your credits and come out on top. Before you check out on the site, be sure to type in the code YouTube so you can save some serious cash on this seriously handy digital guide. Also, it's 100% money back guaranteed. If you don't like it or if it doesn't help you, then go ahead and let us know. We'll get you your money back. Don't forget that refillable mug hack. This is actually an important hack for both Disney Dining Plan and non-Disney Dining Plan users. Anyone can buy one of these mugs, but if you bought the Disney Dining Plan, you'll get one for free. Now, these mugs can be filled at pretty much any Disney Resort quick service. Here's the cool thing about them. Regardless of which Disney Resort you're staying in, you can get your refillable mug at any participating quick service location. Example time. Let's say it's day one of your trip and you've booked a room at Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. After you settle in and put away your luggage, you take the Skyliner over to meet up with your friends who are staying at Art of Animation. And you're planning on eating at the Landscape of Flavors food court while you're there. Even if you're staying at Caribbean Beach, you're more than welcome to pick up your refillable mug at Landscape of Flavors if you haven't yet picked it up at Caribbean Beach or anywhere else. And this hack goes for non-Disney Dining Plan users too. If you're staying at one Disney World Resort but want to purchase a refillable mug at a different one, you're more than welcome to do just that. Your mug purchase will just be out of pocket ranging around the $22 mark and you'll be able to fill it up at any resort quick service that's participating. So be sure to fill her up at the start of your day before you head out to the park so you've got a soda, coffee, or tea to sip on right from the get-go. And don't forget to refill, refill, refill any and every chance you get while you're at one of the Disney resorts. Gotta get your money's worth, right? Okay, the next hack is kind of something that we are excited to say you can do now because you couldn't do it before, but we're also kind of sad to say that it's not a great deal. And that is eating at lounges with your Disney dining plan. So we've been pretty hyped to see that lounges are now part of the DDP family of credits since that didn't used to be the case pre-2020. So now that the DDP has gone live, I'm not so sure y'all need to be using your precious credits in lounges if you've got other options to choose from. And we, you know, we went to a lounge and we figured this out. So lounges are a solid alternative if you're unable to make dining reservations for the attached restaurants, if it has an attached restaurant. But Disney's lounges may not be able to stretch your Disney dining plan dollar in the best, most efficient way, which is, of course, what we're always trying to do. For starters, bars and lounges use up an entire table service credit, at least most of them do. And with the standard Disney dining plan, a table service credit typically gets you an entree, a dessert, and a non-alcoholic or select alcoholic beverage if you're over 21 years old. Now, let's say you decided to use a dining credit on the Enchanted Rose Lounge over in Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, like we did. The Enchanted Rose typically serves up snacks like house-made beef jerky and warm marinated olives, but they also have appetizers like seasonal flatbreads, house-made truffle fries, or charcuterie. With your DDP credit, you could get an appetizer and a drink here, but since this lounge doesn't offer any desserts, you're gonna get the short end of the stick. Not to mention, your appetizer is gonna be treated as your entree here. So instead of getting a $20 to 
dollar entree at a full sit down restaurant, your entree, quote unquote, is only going to be worth around 12 to 22 dollars here. And nice try, you can't use your credit on the Enchanted Roses $120 caviar, but I applaud your moxie. And despite you using your credits on a lounge where the cocktails and specialty drinks are plentiful, you're going to be way limited on what you can use your drink credit towards. Now, this one really surprised me. According to a few of our lounge cast members that we talked to on January 9th, you can get an appetizer as an entree with an alcoholic beverage for guests 21 plus, but you cannot get their specialty beverages on the dining plan. You'll only be able to order like generic beer or wine or a simple cocktail like a vodka soda. Nothing too special or too involved. And one of the main reasons to go to these lounges in the first place is to try their interesting and freshly made signature drinks. It'd be kind of a downer to only get a glass a Pinot Noir or Budweiser, you know, just something to keep in mind. It's also important to note that much like the restaurants on property, not every Disney World lounge accepts the dining plan. For example, neither Space 220 Restaurant or Space 220 Lounge in Epcot participate in the Disney dining plan. Per the release of this video, they're a third-party restaurant and a lot of third-party restaurants don't participate, so you can't use dining plan credits there. We do have a full list of participating DDP restaurants and lounges on our DFB website. I know you were going to ask for it, so we've got it. If you want to see exactly which ones accept the Disney dining plan, there you go. And which ones are staying out of the Disney dining plan realm of influence for now, that's all included. So I'll go ahead and add the link to that list down in the description. Just keep in mind that the restaurants that don't use the DDP currently may not always be on that list as time goes on. A lot of times third party restaurants do sign on to the Disney dining plan in like January or February. It just takes them a little bit longer to get the paperwork done or something. So you never really know, but we're going to keep an eye on that. And we're going to make sure that list is updated. So it is important to keep checking back just to see which non-DDP restaurants and lounges may possibly decide to join the dining plan club at a later date. Okay, this next tip is a really fun and interesting one that a lot of people don't realize about the dining plan. And that's that sometimes you can share a meal. Not a lot of the time, but sometimes, and we've got the specifics for you. Even before 2020, using the Disney dining plan on items like pizza and specific shareable items made for two or more guests to enjoy was a moving target. Some restaurants might tell you one thing and others might tell you something else. Of course, you don't want to share an item and use one dining plan credit for it just to like mess with the restaurant. You don't want to do that. That doesn't make any sense. But there are things that are for two people. And the question is, can you use two credits or do you have to use more credits or is it just one credit? What's the deal? And that's not meant to confuse you, though I know it does because it confuses me too. But the rules of the Disney dining plan game really all depend on what restaurant you're visiting. More on that point later. So here's what I can tell you right now based on our personal experiences over the last 20 years. And you can let me know in the comments if you went to any different Disney restaurants that told you something completely different, because they probably did. When it comes to sharing pizza, more specifically those mezzo metro sized pizzas you can order from Via Napoli and Epcot, the giant ones that feed up to four to five guests, we were told that each pizza would cost four to five dining plan credits with each person having to pay one credit. But that's kind of weird, right? Like, does that mean that someone who wanted to buy and eat a giant pizza all by themselves would only have to pay one credit for it? Probably not. Or maybe yes. During our most recent visit, we couldn't get a super straight answer. Remember, this is all new to cast members too. We're all figuring this out together and a lot of those cast members weren't there pre-2020. So just to be on the safe side, plan to pay four or five credits, even if you're tackling this pizza challenge with a smaller group. And when it comes to pizza pickup, which is available at select Disney World hotels, that type of pizza is going to require two quick service credits. And that's not per person, that's just in total. In exchange for two meal credits, you'll get one large pizza and two beverages, non-alcoholic or alcoholic if you're 21 and up. So yeah, not too shabby, especially if you're planning on sharing that pizza with a group of four or more. Now, as far as non-pizza shareables are concerned, much like you'll find on the menu at Yak and Yeti and Animal Kingdom, it's important to remember what I said in our last point. Table service credits only cover an entree, dessert, and drink. So unless some sort of policy change happens in the future, you won't be able to use your one table service credit to get shareable appetizers. Even if you wanted to order an appetizer as your meal at a regular table service restaurant, you'll have to pay for it out of pocket rather than use the Disney dining plan on it. Now, I'm giving you this information, but I'm also not telling you it's gospel. Again, things could change or other restaurants could tell you other things. So just go into each restaurant with that open mind and have a plan B in your back pocket and a credit card just in case you have to pay out of pocket for it, literally. And the next hack is probably the most important one. If you're confused, ask. 
The moral of today's video, when it comes to using your credits on shareable signature drinks and various other food drink items that kind of balance right on the line, there may be different ways your credits can be used depending on the restaurant and what their policy is. You'll never know unless you ask. Even if one restaurant tells you one thing, another may tell you something different. And that's not because the servers are being mean or one has taken a particular liking to you. It's just because, well, your mileage may vary and what they heard from their manager might be different than what someone else heard from their manager. So for example, Disney has stated that you can't use a quick service credit to purchase three snacks. You used to be able to do that, but they are saying on their website that you can't. And yet on day one of the dining plan, we went to a particular quick service location and they said, oh yeah, if you're buying those three snacks, you can use a quick service credit for those three snacks, which is literally what they said you couldn't do on the website. So like I said, Things are going to be a little bit variable here at the beginning until things start settling down. Just heads up on that and stick with us. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to have all the updates for you. Our latest news updates are going to give you updates. Our newsletter is going to give you updates. And we're going to keep using the dining plan and keep trying things out and answering your questions so that we can make sure we get you the most updated information when you're going to Disney World. Now, the most important thing to do after asking about a specific Disney dining plan rule at any restaurant is to accept whatever answer you receive and understand that this answer may not be set in stone for other locations. Don't fight with your cast member. Don't push back. Just do whatever they're telling you you're able to do. Your credits are not bargaining chips and you don't wanna put your server in a pickle by trying to have them bend the rules for you. Please don't do this. It's hard enough as it is. You may wanna ask about a similar rule at another location just in case, but please don't be a jerk. This is so confusing for so many guests and cast members and servers and general managers and it's just tough across the board. Now, I think one of the best examples I can give you for this confusion basically is that adults quick service credits versus the kids quick service credits rule. So before 2020, you could use an adult meal credit on a kid's quick service meal and vice versa. You could use a kid's quick service credit on an adult quick service meal because the dining plan didn't differentiate between those two and the cast members didn't have a button on their registers to differentiate between the two. But according to one of the cast members we asked on January 9th, they now differentiate between the two credit types. That means if you're an adult who likes to order a kid's meal, you may not be allowed to get a kid's meal using your adult dining plan credit. Maybe. Same goes for if your kid wants to order an adult meal, you may need to use a credit from an adult dining plan for that. Probably. However, in some cases, like what we found over at Yorkshire County Fish Shop in Epcot, for example, when there's no distinct kids and adults menus, it seems in our experience that any kind of credits, kids or adults, can be used to buy a basket of fish and chips. So again, it never hurts to ask when it comes to the dining plan because there are no stupid questions when it comes to a service you're paying a lot of money for. Just brace yourself in case the answers end up not being what you hoped for and be kind to the cast members as they continue to learn and relearn this system alongside you. Because one thing we've learned from Genie Plus is that Disney can keep changing the rules on you. All right, everyone, <laughs> I've got an important assignment for you. If you've used the Disney dining plan in the past or recently, what's been your experience with it? And if you've never used the DDP before, what are some of the questions you've still got about it? Let's all help each other out here because there's a lot involved with this service and absolutely no room for gatekeeping when there's so much money for said service on the line. In the meantime, we'll continue using the Disney dining plan around property and let you know if we stumbled upon any more hacks or rule changes in the future, because we will. <laughs> Returning service or not, the Disney dining plan is still new for 2024, meaning a lot of adjustments could be made later on to help improve things for future guests. So the best thing you can do right now is join us as we learn all the new stuff together, like one big happy Disney dining plan family. <laughs> And if you're super serious about purchasing the Disney dining plan for your trip, don't forget about our full guide to maximizing the DDP now live on dfbstore.com. Okay. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, if you've just come in through this Disney dining plan video, we've got a whole Disney dining plan playlist for you to watch with a lot more information and general info and definitions and stuff like that. And subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more good stuff here too. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.